I'm so excited you're here because I have several Dollar Tree spring DIYs that you're not gonna wanna miss. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Now all of these DIYs are super beginner friendly. So we're gonna start off with DIY number one. And I'm gonna take this little plaque that was on a stake and I'm just going to take the sticker off of the back, which really didn't matter in the end because you're not going to see it anyway. But I did go ahead and take off that stake. Then I really was not too sure what I wanted to do, but I dug in my stash of transfers. This is why I always tell you guys to grab the transfers that you see and like because they do go out of stock. They do retire. And I'm not too sure if this particular transfer is in my chalk shop or not, but I will leave the link to my chalk shop in the description box as well as the pinned comment. And I'm going to start off with this little nest and I'm going to transfer on the nest part with my camel chalk paste. Next, I'm going to make sure that's really dry by hitting it with my blow dryer. And then I'm going to take the second piece, which is the eggs, and transfer that on with my eucalyptus chalk paste. Now, I get questions every single video. Melissa, how do you make sure that your transfers do not bleed? And how do you get a good application? So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your transfer is stuck down to your surface really, really well. Then you're going to stir up your paste. Make sure it's nice and stirred because you don't want to get any clumps or anything like that. And then when you pull up your transfer, you want to pull up your transfer really slowly. You don't want to go quick. And you also want to apply your paste with nice, even pressure. So once I hit my eggs with the blow dryer, then I went in with the welcome to our nest and I transferred that on with my black paste. Next, I'm gonna peel back my transfer to reveal that absolutely stunning image that comes out so crisp and so clean. There's absolutely no way that you would be able to get some of the details that you do with transfers with vinyl or anything like that. You would be stuck weeding that forever. And even still, you probably would not weed out all of the negative space. So that's another reason why I love chalk so much because not only is it so quick and easy to use, my daughter who was five at the time when I started using chalk was a chalk pro by the age of five. So I know that anybody can do it with a little bit of dedication and just trial and error and really it just comes out so crisp and clean that peeling back that transfer never gets old so once the wording was transferred on and I dried that then I took this little greenery design from a different transfer and transferred that on up at the top and made a double jute bow and glued that down to the middle of the faux greenery and look how cute this turned out I have to say that I am really impressed and very grateful Grateful that Dollar Tree is bringing us more farmhousey designs like this. So I'm so excited to hear what you guys think of DIY number one down in the comments. If you're enjoying this video, I would love for you to become part of my crafty family by clicking that red subscribe button. Don't forget to share this out. It really helps my channel. Let's jump back in. For DIY number two, we're going to start off with some of my eucalyptus chalk paste and some water. If you did not know, you can actually paint with chalk paste. You can do a lot of things with chalk paste. It's removable. You can paint with it. There's literally so many things. But anyway, I am going to take the paint that I made and I'm just going to dry brush all the way around the edges of this little plaque from Dollar Tree. Now, when I picked this sign up, you guys, I had zero idea what I was going to do with it. I love the design and I thought it was super cute, but it's just one of those pieces that you're just not really too sure about, right? So anyway, I came up with this little idea. I don't even know how I came up with it. A lot of times my projects, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I just 
go and uh, make it up as I go along, which this is one of those. So I kind of had an idea in my mind, but once I was done painting the frame, then I'm going to take some of the color your own ornament eggs from Dollar Tree that are now coming in a pack of 10. I was really, really impressed when I saw that. So I take four of the eggs and I give them a good coat of that same paint mixture that I made with my eucalyptus chalk paste. Just a little disclaimer, I just had a baby four months ago and he is a breastfed baby, so he's a mama's boy. So he's right here with me. If you guys hear little grunts or noises, no, that's not your dog. No, that's not your kid, it's mine. So anyway, I'm gonna arrange the eggs on my little sign to be evenly spaced and then once I have them in place then I'm going to go ahead and lift them up and glue them down with my Gorilla Glue hot glue which is my all-time favorite hot glue. Now you can use whatever hot glue you have on hand but I do get questions so I just like to answer those if I think of it. So once they were all glued down, now I'm gonna show you a little bit how my brain works. So this was my original idea. And then if you remember last, last video, I was gonna say last week, but last video, I did that um, little egg with the bunnies and the gnome buddies, which again, I'm not into gnomes, you guys. I don't know why, I'm just not the biggest fan. But when I saw these bunny gnomes, I could not get enough of them. They are very Easter farmhouse to me. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, long story short, I was originally gonna do the bunnies, but I actually filmed all of these projects kind of in the same few days and just split it up. So I was like, you know what? I just did that little egg. This would be so cute alternating the bunnies and the gnome bunnies. So that is what I did. But if you don't like the gnomes, I know that there's a lot of other people who just aren't gnome fans. And trust me, girl, I completely get you. But I personally thought this was super cute even though I don't like gnomes. So I'm curious to know what you guys think down in the comments if you guys like the gnomes or would you have just put all bunnies For DIY number three, we're going to use these new wood houses that I got from Dollar Tree. I have never seen these before until about a week ago, and they do have three different sizes. These are all the different sizes and shapes that they had in this particular style. So I did pick up a few of each, and there was plenty at my store, but this was one of my huge, huge stores. I have several stores that I go to, and this one is my best store, so it didn't surprise me that these were there. And... Um, there was plenty so check out your store and maybe you can find them like i said i feel like they're a new item because i've never seen them before but if you guys have seen them before let me know down in the comments but i'm just going to make some more paint with my chalk paste now i'm just showing you here how i do it i take these bamboo sticks that i got from my amazon shop as always i have that linked down in the description box below as well as the pinned comment so I just take some of my chalk paste and that bamboo stick and I usually like cut it into three different pieces. That way I have several different stir sticks. And then I just take the paste into a little jar. I get these at Dollar Tree with some water. And then I just kind of mash it together until it's all mixed together. Once I had my paint made, then I go ahead and I paint one of the houses with that eucalyptus chalk paste paint. Next, I'm going to paint this 
little wider shorter house with my white Waverly chalk paint and I personally like distressed coats of paint because it's rustic and it just suits my decor but if you do not like that look you can totally give these all really good coats so that way it's a nice even layer but I personally like when the wood shows through. For the last house, y'all know I love my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. So I just kind of brushed off as much as I possibly could of that white paint onto a paper towel. And then I just used the same brush because I really didn't mind if it had some white streaks in it. But if you don't like that look, again, just use a clean brush. But I use that same brush and I stain the last house with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain again. Look how gorgeous that looks with the white streaking. I, I personally love it. Let me know what you guys think. Next, I'm going to take this pack of unfinished wooden little fence pieces from Dollar Tree with the flowers on the top. Look how cute they are. Now, they would not fit together properly. All I had to do was just kind of cut off that little edge where the fence meets. That way, it could fit together nicely. And then I paint all of my pieces with white Waverly chalk paint. Altogether, I needed seven of those little fence pieces. So I did need two packs, but in the second pack, I have five left over, and really it's no big deal to me. I feel like a dollar 25 isn't too bad for these. So anyway, once I was done cutting them, like I said, I gave them all a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint with my chip brush, always linked in my Amazon shop. Once again, down in the description box below, or the pin comment. I also had to trim one of the little fences down just because with the wider house, it did not fit all the way. I needed three, but it was still just a little too long. So I did lay them out, mark it, and then cut that down so that it would fit nicely with a clean edge. Now, because these little pieces have so many details, it is kind of hard to paint them. So the easiest way to do it is just put a little bit of paint on the end of your brush and do more of like a dabbing motion. I, I've tried it both ways, just painting it regular and then like dabbing it. And it is just much easier to cover when you dab your brush. Once I was done painting all of my pieces and they were dry, then I take a chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I dry brush that stain all around all of these little pieces. And for this part, I do brush it like a regular brush stroke. I do not dab it because you're going to get a different effect than you will when you brush it on. With that same brush and stain, I'm going to use that to dry brush all the way around all of my houses. As I always tell you guys, if you do not like dry brushing, you can totally skip this step. But I personally just love the way that it looks. It suits my decor. So the way that I like to tell people to dry brush is to start off with a dry brush and whatever, your, whatever paint or stain that you're using. And you just want to put a little bit on the end of your brush. Then you're going to dab off the excess paint. And I like to do it in layers. So I start off with a very light hand. And then I just layer my dry brushing until I like it. Until I like it and until my eyes are happy. So I thought that uh, actually I do here in a minute. But for the greenhouse, I dry brush some white all the way around as well as in the middle. And then once the white was done, then I do use the brown as well just for like a natural effect. And for the natural house, the stained house, I dry brush some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around that.
Once the paint was completely dry, then I lay my fence pieces back onto my houses just to make sure that it fits nice and evenly. And then I go ahead and glue them down with my hot glue. Because these pieces are so dainty, I also wanted to mention that I did not use a ton of hot glue. All I did was put a few little dabs on the back of each and it held it perfectly. Now because the fence still was a little hard to see on this white house, I did go in with that eucalyptus paint mixture and dry brush some of that on the little flowers in the fence because I wanted you to really be able to see it. Now if you remember from last video, we made a little sign with these Dollar Tree rub-on transfers and this is a this is the rest of that rub-on transfer. So I take the You Are a Wildflower and I transfer that one on to the Eucalyptus house. And then I'm going to take the little garden tools up at the top of that rub-on transfer and I'm going to transfer that on to the middle house. When working with these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree, you always want to make sure to pull up your plastic nice and slow. That way you can make sure that the image is completely transferred on because I can tell you from experience that I have lifted up that plastic more times than none so quick. The image was not left behind and then it gets all messed up. So trust me when I tell you just to make sure that it's transferred on before you pull up that plastic. Next, I'm going to take the March Club Couture and I'm going to transfer that on to the third house. Now, if you do not know what Club Couture is, or if you guys, matter of fact, if you guys want information on how to get 40% off of everything on the chalk site, or you want to learn about chalk or Club Couture, text my number. I'll leave it right here on the screen for you. Text me the word Club Couture or text me the word chalk to learn how to get 40% off of everything on this site. So once I had that transfer transferred on, then I'm going to just glue them together with a little bit of hot glue. I put it right on top of the first house's fence. Then I'm going to put the middle piece on and then I'm going to glue the second side down. That way I can make sure it's nice and even. And that was it for this project, you guys. Look how absolutely stunning this turned out. This was another project that I literally had no idea what I was doing. Oh, and I wanted to mention that you could also add these little bees or I did see ladybugs in this style. Um, but I just personally liked it without it, so I left them off. But again, if you like that look, you can totally add little embellishments just like that. So let me know down in the comments. This was what I was saying was this was another one of those projects. I literally had zero idea what I was doing, but it just came to me as I went along and I'm absolutely loving the results. So let me know down in the comments which project is your favorite. Moving on to DIY number four, we're going to take three of these unfinished wood signs from Dollar Tree and I start off by taking all of the jute hangers off. I just cut that hanger right in the middle and then pull it through and then to glue these together, it's super easy and it makes one big sign. I'm going to lay them all out next to each other. Then I'm going to take some jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart and my Gorilla Hot Glue and I'm just going to glue them at the seams with my jumbo popsicle 
popsicle sticks. Now it does not fit two popsicle sticks one on top of the other so I do just cut that down to size and then continue to glue that down and that's also going to put something behind those middle holes so that way when I go to spackle the holes it has something to catch it from falling through. Next, I'm gonna take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, and if you have a putty knife, then you can totally use that, but I just use my fingers and fill in those holes, and then y'all know I'm so impatient. So in order to speed up that drying time, I do hit that with my blow dryer, and then once the holes were completely dry, then I went ahead and sanded them down smooth. You always wanna make sure that you wipe whatever it is that you're painting or staining. You wanna wipe it down before you stain it or paint it just because it can make your stain or paint really chunky. So I did just wanna give you guys that tip. But the next step, I use my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain to give this a distressed coat. Again, y'all know I'm super impatient, so I hit that with my blow dryer to make sure that it's nice and evenly dried. And then originally, I was just going to transfer this on and then dry brush, but I wanted the colors to be on top of the dry brushing, if that makes sense. So the easiest way to use bigger transfers, this is a C size transfer. So when you're working with bigger transfers, it is a little tricky. So, so to try and prevent it from sticking to itself because they are really sticky, you wanna take the backing sheet away from the transfer and then have the transfer laying sticky side up. If that made no sense, you can see what I just did. But I put the backing sheet back to the transfer. That's another little tip for you guys. It's much easier to put the backing sheet to the transfer than it is the other way around. But I take a large chip brush from Home Depot and my white Waverly chalk paint and I really focus where those boards meet because I wanted these to look like pieces of wood put together and then I dry brush all the way around my sign being a little bit l more light-handed where the boards are then I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to just dab over those holes to make them look like screw holes Now, they recently just reformulated the actual transfers. If you can see here, you can now see through them, which I appreciate so much. You guys have no idea how much time I would spend trying to line this up properly because, hey, hi, if you're new here, my name's Melissa and I have OCD so bad that it would literally take me like 10 minutes just to line up the transfer because if it wasn't like perfect, it would drive me absolutely nuts. So anyway, I can appreciate that they're now see-through and if you can also see that this thing takes paste so much better as well. You, you don't have to use as much. It doesn't have as much waste because not as much is left behind when you squeegee. So that's another thing that I love about the new transfers. But anyway, I lay down my transfer and then I transfer on the bunny and some of the wording with my white paste and then the market, the flowers, and then the wording at the bottom. I transferred that on with our new color. 
I forget what it's called. I'll leave it up on the screen for you guys. And then last but not least, I cover the greenery with my eucalyptus paste. And then once I was done transfer that, transferring that on, then I go ahead and peel back that gorgeous image. And mine looks absolutely gorgeous. I love that rustic look, but if you don't like it, then you can do one color pull it up, dry it, do your next color, pull it up, dry it, and so on and so forth. But I personally like the rustic look when some of the paste is a little bit more dry and pulls up with the transfer. But again, if you don't like that, then the method that I just told you works really well. Now you guys know signs are some of my favorites, so I absolutely love this and I'm curious to hear what you think down in the comments. For the last and final DIY, I'm going to take a wood round from Dollar Tree, take the hanger off, and then I'm going to mark it with some painter's tape to be able to paint in the middle. You always want to hold up your sign so that way you can see your little part where you're going to paint it and make sure that it's nice and even. So once I was satisfied with the placement of my tape, then I'm going to push it back and make sure that it's really stuck down. If you don't, sometimes you can have bleeding. So I make sure that it's really stuck down and then I paint it with that eucalyptus chalk paste paint that I made. Surprise, surprise. I hit that with my blow dryer and then I peel back my painter's tape and I'm just going to use that same exact painter's tape. That way I don't have to waste any more pieces. Now, if this was smaller painter's tape, I probably would have used different pieces, but because this is the thicker tape and I don't have to paint over that eucalyptus color, I did go ahead and just use the same pieces and line that up. And then I paint the top and the bottom with with my white Waverly chalk paint, leaving some of that wood show through. Next, I'm gonna peel back that painter's tape and I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and a chip brush and dry brush all the way around the white parts. And then once I get done with the top and the bottom, then I'm gonna go in with another chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush that little middle piece. Next, I'm going to take my new spring transfer. This cuts up into four different transfers. And as always, I will leave all of the Chalk Couture products as well as my website linked down in the description box as well as the pinned comment. And I like to leave it all in one cart link for you guys. And just keep in mind that you can add and subtract from that cart as you wish. I just like to put it all in one place so it's easier for you guys to find. So once I figure out which transfer I'm going to use, I'm going to use the flowers at the bottom. And then I'm also going to, I can't even read it now because they're so see-through. It says, you belong among the wildflowers. So I thought that that was such a gorgeous little saying. And once I had that transferred on with my white chalk paste, then I'm going to take the next transfer that has wildflowers in it and transfer that on to the bottom with my black paste. Once again, to get a really crisp image, you want to make sure that your transfer is nice and stuck down. So smooth it out with your fingers. Then you're going to take your paste, make sure your paste is stirred up really, really, really well so that it's nice and incorporated. And then when you squeegee, you're going to squeegee it on with even pressure. And when you pull back that transfer, you're going to pull it up very slowly. Don't go quick. Don't go medium. Go very slowly and you should have a nice, gorgeous, crisp image that looks extremely high-end. 
Last but not least, I'm going to make a simple bow with this gorgeous burlap ribbon that I had using this simple method here. And then I glue that to the top of my sign. And literally, that was it for this sign and all of these projects, you guys. Let me know down in the comments, as always, which project was your favorite. I always love to hear from you guys. And as always, once again, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. I appreciate you and love you with all my heart and soul. None of anything that I do would be possible without you guys and without your support. And those of you that show up for me and comment and watch my videos start to finish and watch the ads for me, you, go, you guys don't even know how much you mean to me. So that is why I am sharing my secrets on how I recently just lost 80 pounds altogether. So text me the word ketone chalk or just to say hi for info. Ketones are how I lost all the weight and I would love to share how I did it with you guys to help you feel better, help you lose some weight and just feel like yourself again. So with that being said, I love y'all so much. Text my number on the screen and until next time guys, bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.